Hey guys, welcome to Weld.com. I'm Kevin, a new host to the Weld.com team. I'm owner of JMW Fabrication and host of the Welding Business Owner Podcast. Today, we're going to take a pile of aluminum parts and build a beautiful aluminum spiral staircase. So stay tuned and check it out. material that we're going to use for this build is three and a half inch schedule 40 aluminum pipe. Main treads are going to be 3 16th aluminum diamond plate bent down and bent up for strength so you have stability while you're walking up and down. And then the posts and pickets are going to be eighth inch wall, one inch square and eighth inch wall, one inch round. The material that we're going to use for the handrail is inch and a half aluminum round tubing that we're going to put in our bender and bend on a helix to go all the way up. All right, so let's go over some of the tools that we use to build spiral staircases. First thing you need to know is most of them we build horizontally. That means we have a stand on one end, stand on the other, and we build them horizontally with the ground. One of our most important tools is the tread holding tool. They don't make this, so we had to build it. It's a piece of pipe with a piece of square tubing and a piece of flat bar on top of it that actually slides over top of the main post and then holds our treads on while we position them. In conjunction with this, since our treads have a bend down and a bend up, we made a custom vice grip clamp with a piece of tubing on it to compensate to go over top of that lip that comes up so that when we clamp it on, we can clamp it firm on both sides. The next tool is our main baluster holding tool. We only use this for the first tread, but this really helps position the main baluster going through the second one because you clamp it on to the first tread, set the baluster in it, and it holds it pretty close to square and plumb or where it has to be so that you can reposition it once you put the second tread on and brace off of that. Next is our baluster and picket holding tool. Each one of these is custom made for each staircase because it matches the holes it put into the tread so that when you put your main baluster through, you can actually clip this on the top of it, clip this on the main, second main baluster, and when you put your infill pickets in, it holds the spacing correct as, as, as the same in the tread on the bottom. That way you don't have to be out there measuring holding it up there, trying to use three hands to put each one of these pickets in. The next tool we've got is this really awesome pipe clamp from Strong Hand Tools. This is really helpful when we're putting two pieces of pipe together that we have to blend seamlessly. This holds it in place. You don't have to worry about where you're clamping down because these jaws wrap right around the pipe and hold it right in place. Comes in super handy when we're putting the hammer on. Next tool we've got is our Metabo pipe sander. These spiral staircases go in really high in houses, so transitions from pipe to fittings to pipe really matter and they have to be seamless. This helps smooth out and blend any imperfections we have and gives us a really, really great finish when we're done. Next up is our Bosch electric die grinder. These staircases have a lot of complex angles and a lot of times you can't get a traditional cutoff wheel to go in there and cut a tack off or break something apart. So we use this with a burr bit to get in there in the really tight spots. And it comes in super handy when our holes from the plasma table aren't exactly what we need to them to be to put the pickets in. So we use this instead. And last but not least is tons and tons of scraps. The key to making these spiral staircases perfect is bracing. Bracing, bracing, bracing. Where you brace is really important to getting the good results of having all the pickets and posts in line with the main post. So raise your scrap in, grab some material, and let's start building. When we built these stairs, we built them in a horizontal position so we're able to rotate them any way we need. We use a homemade stain with a pipe welded on the end that has a locking nut so you can lock it in any position you need. Then we just use a basic pipe roller on the other end so that we can move it around and maneuver it as we need to put the handrail on. First thing we do is lay out the treads. We use a water-based marker to mark these treads out because a lot of these staircases get powder coated white and if you don't use water-based, the color will bleed through the powder coating. Next, we take a wrap around and make the mark all the way around the pipe so that we can see that mark in any position that the stair is in. Next, we put on the tread holding tool. This tool is specially made for holding the treads in position so that you don't have to fumble with them. It's not a foolproof tool, but it gets you pretty darn close to being level and plumb. It's made from a piece of pipe with a locking nut on the bottom that'll hold the treads in any orientation. Now they don't sell this tool in stores, so you're gonna have to make your own.
Next, we use a modified vice grip with a pipe welder on the end to reach up and over the rise of the treads and clamp it on properly. Next, we tack on the first tread. It's really important that we get this tread right because all the other treads are gonna go off of the measurement of this. We're gonna tack this tread in really good because this is what we're gonna be bracing off of for the pickets and treads above it. Now that we have the first tread tacked in well, we're gonna go ahead and put the second tread on. The balusters for these stairs go through the top tread and through the bottom tread in order to keep the proper clocking of the treads on the stairs. We pre-mark these balusters ahead of time so that all we have to do is put our line to the top of the tread and we're good to go. It's important to clock the cope of the pipe correctly so that when you put the handrail in, it lays right inside the cope. Once we get the first baluster tacked in, we can go ahead and put the third tread on. Once we get the third tread on, we can go ahead and repeat the process with the next baluster. You'll notice that we have a custom tool that fits the profile of the staircase that goes from the first baluster to the second baluster that holds it in place. This is going to come in really handy when we put the infill pickets on later. When you're first starting out and doing it yourself, you need things to be easy. One cool way to do this is the North One app. The North One, it takes all your invoicing, it takes your QuickBooks, it takes all your payment solutions, and puts it into one app. It's an online banking solution that is really awesome and really easy to use. You don't want things to be cumbersome. You don't want to be going over here for this and there over here for this, and then have to make a spreadsheet and plug all these numbers in to figure out, no. Your time is better spent doing other things. If you are gonna do this on your own, the North One app brings all that in-house, under one roof, all online banking. This is awesome. You don't ever have to step foot into a bank again. I know, I hate going to banks. My time is too valuable for me to stand in line at a bank and deposit a check, try to do some sort of banking like that. With North One, it's all online. And it's really important that you separate your personal from your business. A lot of people work out of their own personal checking and they take money when they need and then they get into trouble when they don't pay their taxes or they get deposits and there's no more money left. First thing you need to do is separate it from the beginning. And with this North One app, it really helps you start out on the right foot, which is really how you wanna grow. You don't wanna have to be chasing problems down the road that you should have set up solutions for in the beginning. So now that we have a few treads on, it's time to go back and put some bracing in to keep these pickets plumb with the column. We're just using some scrap tubing that we have laying around the shop, but anything will do. This is why it was so important to have that first tread square, level, and plumb so that we can brace off of it. Now you'll notice that we still have the picket holding tool in there. We don't only rely on this because the holes in the picket spacing and the post spacing tool are 1 16th of an inch oversize. And with that 1 16th of an inch, it doesn't hold it perfectly plumb to the column and consistently all the way up. So we have to actually physically tack something in there to keep it from not moving. You'll notice that we have a post that we move around from tread to tread to keep the staircase from rolling. I don't like to only rely on the locking nut for the stand because at this point, a lot of the weight is on the one side and it's a little bit too much for that one locking nut. Next step, do not skip this. This is super important. You need to go back and make sure all your main balusters are in line and parallel with your main post. 
This is the time to go back and adjust it before you go any further and everything's just tacked up. Sometimes you can bend them into place. Sometimes you gotta kind of adjust a little bit. Maybe you can split the difference. If it's really far off, you gotta go back and cut the, uh, all the treads off. It, it, it is what it is. Sometimes it happens, but this is the, kind of the time to catch it before you go put the main hammer on or put any of the posts in. All right, and now for the part everybody hates, rolling the handrail. I haven't figured out a way to roll a handrail without a roller, so you're gonna need to start with that. Good news is, it's not an exact science, it's more of an art form. So if you mess it up, you can maneuver it, you can tweak it a little bit with a roller, you can actually straighten it back out and start all over again if you need. So, let's get started. All right, now, we've got the tubing roller all set up, we've got the dies installed, and we've got the tube ready to go. Every staircase is different and every tubing roller is different. We've done this before. Actually, we've done a lot of these before. So we have our settings all dialed in for the diameter that we need. And like I said, this is an art. We don't have an exact measurement for the kick to go up to make the helix. We do that by hand. We put it in there, we adjust a little bit. We use two people to kind of get it where we need to be. And we kind of go from there. So let's get rolling on it. Now, an important part with working with this railing is working from the middle of the railing out. You don't wanna start from one side and then work your way around the spiral and then end up at the other end. What you wanna do is you wanna start right in the middle of the stairs, tack it in place, because you're gonna to have to do a little bit of adjustment. And you want to split the adjustment between both sides. So you wanna split the difference of that. So you wanna work from the middle, work your way to the end, and then work your way to the top that way, it's, your adjustment isn't as drastic at one end rather than working from the middle on out. Another helpful tip if you're doing this by yourself or with a friend is to take a piece of round bar and slide it inside one of the tubes. What you wanna do is you wanna rotate the stair so that the middle of the stair that you're working with is at the very top. You slide the bar in through it and then the, that holds the handrail about where it has to be. That way you can kind of work from there on your way out. Another helpful tool we use when positioning the staircases is this homemade little stand bar. What it is, it's just a piece of scrap with some one inch round tubing welded to it at a couple different spots. And it allows us to rotate the stairs and then put this through one of the empty slot holes so that we can clamp it there and then hold it in place at that position that we need. There you go. Now it's held in place, secured on the one side that's heavier. It's not gonna go anywhere, especially with that clamp on there. So now that we have two tacks up top and the railing sitting nice, we run into a little bit of a dilemma. These two posts sit really nice. These two posts have about an inch gap in between and this bottom post sits in there really nice. So most would tend to just pull this down for these two posts to meet. But what happens is if you do that, you're gonna create a hump in here where it's gonna come up from here. It's gonna dip down to these two posts and then hump back up where that other post goes. So instead of doing that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this pipe and we're actually gonna twist it so that that end goes out and it brings this end in so it just lays right in nice with these posts rather than just pulling it straight down and creating a hump. All right, so now that our handrail is on and tacked on good, we're gonna make the return post that goes from the handrail, comes down through this first tread and goes down to the floor. 
what we're going to do is we're, we're actually going to cut this piece of tubing at a pre-specified angle so that it flows right into this tubing really nicely. We're going to actually weld this on and we're going to sand it on the bench so that we don't have to weld it and sand it in place up here. It's going to make it a little bit easier for install and this finish is going to be a little bit nicer. So now that we've got the floor return all finished sanded, polished up, welded, ready to go in there, we're going to take out some of this bracing. We're going to put the floor return back through here. We're going to chop this hammer off and then we're going to weld it up. We're going to finish that part and then we're going to put the pickets in. And now that all the welding's done, it's time to trim off the excess of the pickets. We usually trim it off about a half inch from the bottom of the tread. Now that all the fabrication's done, it's time to get to the sanding. First, we're gonna use a benchmark abrasive 60 grit flat wheel to get all the rough spots out, all the nicks, all the gouges, fill in where we need and get it nice and smooth. And then to finish it off, before it goes to powder coating, we're gonna use a benchmark abrasive fine interleaf disc. What's unique about this disc is it has the sanding and the polishing built into it. Most of the wheels just have sanding or just have polishing. I really like this because it takes the scratches out with the sandpaper and it leaves a really nice finish for the powder coating with the polish. And now that all the sanding's done, it's time to get it off to the powder coater. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video of learning how to build aluminum spiral staircases. Look for more videos from us on weld.com and we'll see you next time.